Welcome to this hands-on tutorial on Amazon Q Business. Amazon Q Business is a generative AI assistant built for enterprise environments. It helps employees find the right information, automate tasks, and make smarter decisions. By securely accessing and understanding internal data. This includes content from tools like Amazon S3, Confluence, SharePoint, Salesforce, and more. Let's get an overview of how Amazon Q Business works. To get started, you create a Q Business application and connect your internal data sources. The service then indexes your data using either a built-in retriever or Amazon Kendra. Employees interact with Q through a simple web interface, asking natural language questions and getting instant, relevant answers. Admins can customize guardrails, access permissions, and security policies. And with optional plugins, Q can do more than answer questions, like opening support tickets or updating records in your CRM system. Now, let's review the pricing. Amazon Q Business is offered in two subscription tiers, each providing different levels of functionality, from basic Q&A to advanced integrations and productivity features. There are also additional costs for indexing, depending on how much data you use. Free trials are available for both user subscriptions and index usage, so you can explore the service before any charges apply. Pricing scales with usage, features, and the number of users. Always check the AWS pricing page for the most current details. Finally, use cases. Amazon Q Business supports a variety of enterprise use cases. Knowledge management, quickly surface documentation, policies, and SOPs. Employee self-service, help teams access HR, IT, or operations info instantly. Customer support, let agents retrieve accurate answers faster. Process automation, take actions in tools like Jira or Salesforce, right from the assistant. With Amazon Q Business, enterprise knowledge becomes accessible, actionable, and secure, powered by generative AI. With this brief introduction, let's dive into the hands-on section. Let's get hands-on with Amazon Q Business. In the AWS console, search for Amazon Q Business. Click on Get Started. Create a new application. This is your starting point for building and managing generative AI applications within your organization. At the top, the How It Works section outlines the three key steps. Create a generative AI application by naming it and setting up access. Enhance the application by connecting data sources, plugins, and guardrails. Customize the web experience to tailor the look and behavior for end users. Below, you'll find the applications list. Currently, there are no applications created, but once you add them, details like status, index type, creation time, and user access will appear here. To get started, click the Create Application button on the right. This will launch the setup flow, guiding you through naming the app, selecting access methods, and enabling features to power your generative AI experience. Click on Create Application. The default application name is already provided. You can change it. Next, choose how users will access your application. Authenticated access is selected as default, which means users must sign in before using the app. Alternatively, you can choose anonymous access, but it does not support features that require user authentication. The outcome option to access a managed web experience is enabled by default. This gives users a built-in interface to interact with your application. Here, you define how access to the application is managed. The AWS IAM Identity Center is selected and recommended. It lets you assign users and groups using AWS Identity Center. You could also use an external SAML identity provider if managing users outside AWS. For access management method, the application is connected to an existing IAM Identity Center instance. You can see the instance ARN and manage users and groups from there. We can set up Quick Start User. You can assign a default user to test the application after it's created. Let me select the user John Doe, which I have created in the AWS Identity Center. You can use this link to add new users AWS Identity Center. For this user, let's set the subscription to Business Light. The pricing detail is provided here. As you notice, for Amazon Q Business Light it is $3 per user per month. And for Amazon Q Business Pro, it is $20 per user per month. Finally, in the Application Details section, you'll see a summary of the application settings. Under Application Service Access, Amazon Q Business needs permission to interact with other AWS services on your behalf. If a service-linked role for Amazon Q apps doesn't already exist, one will be created automatically. We will use the default option that is create and use a new service-linked role. For encryption, Amazon Q Business will use an AWS-owned key by default. 
If you prefer to use your own encryption key, you can customize this later. For now, leave the advanced encryption settings unchecked. In the Web Experience Service Access section, Amazon Q Business again requires permission to use AWS services. Here also we will use the default option that is create and use a new service role. Once all settings are configured, click create to finalize the setup or choose create and open web experience to launch the application right away. Let me click on create. Let's wait for the application to get created. Now the Amazon Q business application has been created successfully. Now let's walk through the main dashboard. Under Q recommendations, you'll find suggestions to enhance your application. Add data sources allows you to connect your enterprise data for richer interactions. Set preferences lets you configure admin controls, guardrails, and LLM feature settings. Monitor usage provides metrics and insights to understand how your users are engaging with the app. Next, in the user access section, you can manage access by assigning users and groups. In this example, one user is already connected, but no groups have been added yet. Scrolling down, you'll see the web experience settings. This section includes the IAM role ARN used to manage permissions, the deployed URL, which links to your live Q business web application, and the title and subtitle used for your web experience. You can customize this interface at any time by clicking the Customize Web Experience button. On the left-hand side, the navigation pane gives you access to enhancements like data sources, admin controls, Q apps, integrations, and more. Actions such as managing plugins. Insights to analyze usage patterns through Amazon Q Business Insights and Q Apps Insights. This dashboard is your central hub for configuring, managing, and improving your Q Business application. Now let's click on data sources to add data sources for our newly created Amazon Q Business demo application. This screen guides you through the process of connecting data so your application can provide intelligent, data-driven responses. At the top, under how it works, you'll see a simple three-step process. Add an index. Before connecting any data sources, you must first create or connect an index. The index acts as a central repository that stores and retrieves content from your connected data sources. Connect and sync data sources. Once the index is set up, you can link various data sources and configure sync schedules to keep your application updated with the latest content. Monitor data source usage. After data is synced, you can monitor performance and sync histories to ensure everything is functioning smoothly. Currently, no index has been added. You'll need to create one to begin using data sources. Click Add an index to get started. At the bottom of the screen is the data sources table, which will list all connected sources along with key details like name, source, data source, state, last sync time, last sync status, current sync state, access control list, since there are no data sources connected yet, the table is empty. Let's click to add an index to start adding an index. The default index name is already provided. We can change it. Next is index provisioning, where you choose the type of index that fits your workload. Two options are available. Enterprise. This is ideal for production environments that need high availability and secure storage. It includes multi-availability zone deployment and supports scaling up to 1 million documents. This option is currently selected. Starter. This is suitable for testing or proof-of-concept setups. It uses a single availability zone and supports up to 100,000 documents. This option is cost-effective for development but not meant for production workloads. Below is, number of units, which defines how much capacity you want to provision. Each unit supports either 20,000 documents or 200 megabytes, whichever limit is reached first. In this case, one unit is selected, and you can choose between 1 and 50 units. Let's choose starter option and click on add an index. Now index creation is in progress. This will take a few minutes. Now let's click on add data source. This is the add data source page in Amazon Q Business. You can connect up to 50 data sources per application. Popular options like Amazon S3, web crawler, and file uploads are shown at the top. Below, you'll find a wide range of cloud and on-premises connectors, including services like Confluence, Dropbox, Google Drive, Jira, OneDrive, Salesforce, SharePoint, Slack, and various databases like MySQL, SQL Server, PostgreSQL, and Oracle and more. To add a data source, simply click the plus icon next to the service. If a source requires special access, it will show a request access link. Use the search bar or filters to quickly find what you need. Once added, your data can be indexed and queried by the Q Business application. 
Let me click on plus icon for Amazon S3. I have already uploaded two documents for this demo application in an S3 bucket. In this step, we're configuring Amazon S3 as a data source. Start by entering a name and optional description for your S3 data source. This helps identify it within your application. Next, under IAM role, select an IAM role with the appropriate permissions to access the specified S3 buckets. You can use an existing role or create a new one if needed. Select create a new service role option. Then, define the sync scope by providing the S3 URI where your data is stored. You can browse S3 to select the bucket and specify a maximum object size limit if necessary. Let's take a look at the two files we'll be using in this tutorial. The first one is a brief overview of AWS Cloud's history. Let's go ahead and open the AWS Cloud History PDF. The second file provides a quick timeline of how artificial intelligence has evolved. Let's open the History of AI PDF. Both of these documents were generated using AI. Rest all sections are optional. Next, select the sync mode. Choose full sync to reprocess data completely each time, or use partial or differential sync modes for incremental updates. Configure your sync run schedule to define how frequently the system should check for updates in the S3 bucket, run on demand, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or custom. Let me select run on demand. You also have options to configure VPC settings, tags, and field mappings. In this example, a document ID is automatically extracted and mapped from the S3 object. Once everything is filled out, click Add Data Source to connect the S3 bucket to your Amazon Q Business application. Now it's adding the data source. This will take a few minutes. Now the data source has been successfully created in Amazon Q Business. At the top, a green notification confirms the creation. Now you can click Sync Now to begin indexing your content for search. Under Data Source Details, you'll find key information. The status is active. The type is S3. It includes the data source ID and the IAM role ARN used for permissions. Currently, no sync has been run yet, last sync status and last sync time are blank, and the current sync state is marked as idle. Below, in the Sync History tab, you'll see a message stating that the data source hasn't been synced yet. Click Sync now to begin processing the content. Additional tabs like Settings and Tags allow you to further manage this data source. This screen is your hub to monitor and manage sync activity for each connected data source. Let's click on Sync now to sync the uploaded contents on the bucket to the this data source. As you can notice, sync started successfully. It can take from a few minutes to a few hours. Sync speeds are limited by factors such as remote repository throughput and throttling, network bandwidth, and the size of documents. Now the sync has been completed. Access the web experience. Let's click on application on the left side. On the Q Business dashboard, click on the deployed URL link. Log in with the user credentials. The first time you log in, you'll be asked to set up multi-factor authentication using an app like Google Authenticator. Once that's completed, you'll enter the main Amazon Q Business interface. Start querying your data. This is the Amazon Q Business Generative AI Assistant interface. At the center, you're welcomed by Amazon Q, a conversational AI designed to help you brainstorm ideas, summarize content, or answer questions based on your company's data. Below the welcome message, you can select between two knowledge modes. Company knowledge to get answers from your internal index data. General knowledge for broader, public information. Use the chat input box to start asking questions. You can type naturally, just like chatting with a human assistant. On the left, you'll find the main navigation menu with access to chat, library, as well as options for feedback, info, and log out. Let's select company knowledge to get answers from your internal index data. Which is I have uploaded two PDF files one at about AI history and the other is about AWS cloud history. Let me ask, when was AWS launched? As you can notice, the answer is augmented using the internal document about AWS cloud history uploaded on S3. Let's try another question from company knowledge. What is Turing test and when was it discussed? As you can notice, it is providing answer based on the uploaded document about history of AI. Now let's try general knowledge option. When you use general knowledge option, Amazon Q can provide general answers even if the information isn't in your dataset. For example, if you ask for a recipe and none exists in your index data, it will use the built-in model to respond. For example, let's ask how to make a thin crust veggie pizza. It has provided the step-by-step -step instructions about making a thin crust veggie pizza. Cleanup reminder. 
Once you've completed your hands-on session, don't forget to clean up. Delete your application to avoid charges after the trial ends. That's it. To summarize, in this tutorial, we explored how to set up and use Amazon Q Business, a generative AI assistant for enterprise users. We started by creating a Q Business application and connecting internal data sources like Amazon S3. We configured indexing. Synced our data. Next, we set up user access through IAM Identity Center and assigned subscription tiers under the available free trial. Once everything was configured, we accessed the Q Business web interface and asked natural language questions. Finally, we reminded users to clean up all resources to avoid charges after the free trial. With Amazon Q Business, you can unlock secure, AI-powered insights and automation from your own enterprise data, quickly and easily.